one say what? <laughs> Mr. Mayor, to all of the Finnish yeah. state officials, president of to the new college, to whom my children and I donated this house in memory of Matthew, his work, his life, in memory of all of the work that faculty and students provided at Sutherland College. The fit seemed to be just right. And uh, since I have someone kind of meddling into the audio, <laughs> I'd like to introduce her. This is our daughter, Rena Evers Everett. <laughs> was eight years of age when her father was assassinated, just a few steps from here. Um, a wonderful support. Uh, we love this house. The people we used to call on Gyne Street, now another name. The people in Jackson, the state of Mississippi, and it may seem strange to some of you that I say that we love in here to Mississippi. It was not necessarily the state, it's the people. All of the people who care, all of the people who committed to see that this is a new call to be done. For those names that we know and those names that we don't know, and I'm just thinking of Alan Henry. Yeah. I'm thinking of Mr. Damon. Yeah. I'm thinking of Reverend Lee. All of yeah. these people that we very seldom hear their names, yeah. who gave at a time when it was not popular, at a time when we were fearful to show, to congregate, <laughs> to say that indeed freedom will be ours. And I cannot tell you how moved I am today. It's more than a dream come true to see this house be established as something very precious, not only in the state of Mississippi, but in the nation. I cannot tell you how moved I am, how rededicated I am to the fight of justice and equality, to see the freedom writers, all of those of you who went through hell to see that today would be a better day, not only for ourselves, but our, for our children and for generations yet to come, because that's what it was all about. That's what it is still all about, and we must not forget that. I often ask Medgar why. Why do you put your life on the line? Why did you not try to get publicity on what it is that you do? And he simply said, it's what I must do. I don't need the credit because my God knows what I am doing. Amen. And as long as he knows and I know and a few other people know, everything is okay. Today I applaud him after all of these years for taking that step. And it's the same one that Freedom Riders took some 50 years ago. It was not the publicity of the senior names in the paper, but it was to change a system that needed to be changed and you were willing to pay the price to do it. I wish in some way each and every person who has been involved in changing American society to be where it is today and those who are committed to taking it even a step further that we knew each and every name, that we could sing the praise of each and every name. But we know in our hearts what we have given, what we are dedicated to, and I say especially to the younger generation of what still must be done. I could not be any more emotional than I am right now except to break down and cry. And I will not do that because I remember what my aunt said to me once when I cried publicly. And she said, baby sister, don't cry because you look so ugly. 
Oh, keeping that in mind. <laughs> I'm not going to cry. But my heart is full. As I look at my beautiful relatives, as I look at my friends, my neighbors, the leadership, we owe it to ourselves to shed tears of joy because we deserve it all. It was not easy for any of us. It has not been easy for me. But I made a promise that if anything happened to Metzger, one, I would see, I'd do everything I could to see that justice prevailed. And you know what happened. It took 30 some years. But it happened. And it's called perseverance. It means not giving up. And the other promise that I made to myself was that I would do everything I could to see that Medgar Evers was remembered. Because too many times, our heroes are there for a day. And that's it. And they are forgotten. What they have given is not remembered. For those who give don't necessarily demand to be remembered. And I see so many people here today that have played such a crucial role in all of this. It's one of the more historic things that has happened in America to have the Freedom Riders return to Jackson, Mississippi. It is something that is marvelous that we need, it, we need to be reminded of on a constant basis. And if I may divert my remarks here very briefly, we have been through the fire. There's another generation or two behind us who don't quite understand what we went through. Because I think we reached the point where we said we have overcome and we are tired and we have made things better for you. Therefore, we are going to retire and just let things go forward. Somewhere in that, my friends, the history, the lessons, are not passed on. Yes. So what do we do to capture that? And I know I'm going to deviate just a little, but I will leave this place, and I will go to the Smith Robertson Museum, <coughs> where there is an exhibit that is opening up, and it's called the Freedom Sisters. Yes. Twenty women over a number of years, age-wise, yes. who contributed to the progress of African Americans and the country as a whole will be exhibited there. Yes. I invite all of you to go. It is something you will not believe. When you sit on that bus with the likeness of Rosa Parks yes. and you see your reflection uh -huh. sitting behind her, That's it. You can feel a twinge of what it was like. When you see the dog and hear it bark uh -huh. near Fannie Lou Hamer, you will know somewhat of what it was like. This is not a commercial to go out and buy a Ford motor company. I want to make that very clear right now. But there is some praise to that company for having the strength to have staff, of which we have here, who put this exhibit together. Yes. It's not for all of us, but it's for people of all colors, races, and creeds, and ages, because you can learn, and it is a way of passing the torch. So I say to you, as they open tonight, please put it on your agenda to go and see this, and who knows, you may be fortunate enough to have it in your community at some time. But it is about passing the torch. It is about remembering. It is about doing. It is about singing more than we shall overcome and come up with a new song that goes along with that in terms of who we are, what we have done, what we can do, what we will do in spite of everything that says no, you won't. 